So I was asked a question about area plans in Revit, and I want to show you what that means. Uh, I'm going to use the Revit sample project. So firstly, over on the left-hand side of the project browser, you're going to notice there's floor plans, 3D views, elevations, sections, and several other categories of views. New ones are going to appear when I create area plans, and I'm going to tell you what that means. So if I go to plan view and I ask for an area plan, it's going to it's going to say, OK, what type do you want? There are two types just baked into Revit. There's gross building and rentable. Those really kind of don't mean anything. They're just labels. But I'm going to pick, you know, I'm going to pick level one and say, give me a, a, an area plan at, at gross building. And I'm going to say no to this. Automatically create area boundary lines associated with external walls because I want to do it manually. So. Now you see that over on the left, area plans, gross building sh shows up. And, and what I would probably use this for is to come in and, um, and if I go to architecture, area boundary, and I, I've actually right clicked and added this to my quick access toolbar because I use this so much. So I'm going to click it here, area boundary. I'm going to uncheck apply area rules. There are area rules you can use that will follow certain portions of the wall and that can be significant if you're doing like a boma calculation but i'm going to keep i always try to keep it simple and do this fully manual so if i uncheck that it's going to allow me to to just draw freestyle and probably what i'll come in and do is maybe i'll start well i don't know let's start it looks like this is my face of glass and that's often the way i count the face of a building and I'll just run that over, and I see there's a little jig jag here, so I'll come down, and it's actually not quite snapping, so I'll just overshoot a little bit, and um, yeah, it's actually finding. I can come back here and fix this, but it's finding snapping to like the the wall location line in some cases, and I'm just escaping out and sort of restarting my line, so. Just snap there. And I can fix this later. Get this all aligned the way I want to align it. And I can even use the, the pick tool if I want. Tab through. Doesn't seem to want to find. Oh, because my area rules are applied. If I tab through, it'll find that face of glass. And then I get to make my life a little bit easier, I can just say. Uh, isolate category, and then I can kind of see what's going on here and do a quick modification, edit these things. And this is this is sort of a, like equivalent to uh, being in in uh, you know like AutoCAD and drawing poly lines around things in order to create areas. But the one cool thing about this is it will actually create and calculate donut holes for you. So in this case, I've got my lines, and nothing really you know. Nothing super fancy happens. Um, and I just turned on my line weight so you could see that purple line is the area boundary line, which you can change the colors of in categories. But now what I'm going to do is come in and, and add an area. Uh, no area tags are loaded, so I have to load one. And it'll bring me out annotations, area tag. And if I click, you see that. There's an actual tag, and then if I tab, it finds the area itself. And it's just it's broadcasting out into space and finding the extents of this. So if I if I grab one of these lines and move it like that, the area immediately updates and and it finds it. And if I if I come in and, and draw a well this will be easier to see actually if I put in a if I put in, in the annotations, I put a color fill legend here. And it's saying area gross building, which is what we're working in. And it's going to give me a color scheme, which is usually kind of nasty. And I can change the colors, and I can change the way the colors are assigned to this. I can assign them by the name of the area tag or various parameters of the area. So in this case, the, that green blob shows up. That Everything in green, you know, not minus the walls or the furniture. It's just doing that graphically. But everything in this space is is being uh, quantified 
but I can come in and actually if I created a room, it actually makes a donut hole here and I can put another area. So the benefit of this is like, you know, it's, it's, you know, call it area, area two, and I can change my legend to, you know, the name, and it assigns two different colors to those areas. So the reason why I would do, uh, I would do, uh, the reason why it allows you to do different area plant types is so that I can actually calculate the building in many different ways. So I'm on level one here, and I'm in the gross building it, it, uh, category. If I come in here and say um, plan view, area plan, rentable, I change to rentable now, level one. You're going to see now I've got a like basically a totally separate universe. This is sort of like the area plan designations are sort of living. They've got a leg in the in the world of annotation, but a leg in the world of of modeling because you, you do like these are sort of like annotated, but they're also sort of like model elements just within this within this category. So unlike rooms, which kind of show up everywhere. Areas are, are never going to show up in your floor plans. They're never going to show up in any other views. They're only going to show up within a, a, a stack of plans that's put into this place. So if I go into my area plan rentable, now I can come in and, and you know, if I just do this sloppy and quick, you know, this looks like a room and uh, this looks like a room. It's probably going to yell at me. See, it's, uh, you know, rabbit warnings are annoying, but they're there for a reason. So it's warning me, hey, you, you, overlap some lines so you should be careful about that and i can come back in here while well, it's fresh in my mind and tab until i find the offending character and i and i can just like let this one line do the work for me come out here you know what i would probably do is actually outline do the same outline that i did before and then come back in and put in room divisions so i come here 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 and you see nothing's happened because I haven't actually placed any areas. But when I start to do that, you know, one, two, three. And this looks like a separate little foyer, but watch what happens if I do this. It's going to say, whoa, multiple areas in the same enclosed region. And it's going to offer to delete the area. But I'm going to say, nah, I don't do that because I kind of want that guy. And I'll just come in, modify, extend. And extend that area boundary and this this will probably be clearer if i come in and i do uh, sorry and annotate colorful legend for these guys for rentable area and i'll edit my scheme and i'll say hey do do the colors by name and i'll call this guy you know the i don't know what that is it's like a kitchen dining Oh my God, horrible spelling. And here we have a uh, bathroom, foyer, and uh, some sort of living room. Yeah, so kind of a <laughs> horrible palette, but you get the idea. So now these, so that these guys are in their own place. Oh, I gotta change that kitchen so these guys are in their own space and then on the gross plan this is doing its own thing you know for a gross plan i'm probably not going to have the second little area and i'll delete that now be careful because what i just did is if i go like that it's not like everything else is locked if i hit delete now i'm, I'm not i'm deleting the area tag but also a bunch of furniture so just be aware that it's like kind of the same the same thing is going on here that's going on in other plans. You have to be very, very careful about big, big lassos and, and deletions. So I've got, and, and, and another reason why you would do this is now when I go up and I go in and I say view schedule, um, if I want to schedule areas gross building, I could do that in a separate category of schedule versus rentable. And they're, the, they're just firewalled off two different worlds. And if I want to make a new one, I want to make a new category because you can have as many as you want. I can come into my architecture tab, go to room and area, 
come down to area volume computations and just say new. And I'll just say, uh, you know, uh, you know, 100% DD calculation, just to kind of uh, get, you know, make some sense. And then I'll just zero this out. And, you know, it's all, it's self-explanatory. I don't really need an explanation. And the next time I come up from into my views, plan view area plan, you can see that this is now one of my options. So if I want to do a much more detailed area calculation, calculate like the, you know, the surface of the, uh, of the bar and the kitchen area, I, I, can, I can do that separately from other calculations. And that's sometimes relevant because you'll have, um, you know, even, even at the end of a phase, you may have five different calculations. You could have the building department wanting one, the zoning board wanting another, or the developer wanting a different kind and the leasing agents wanting their own kind. And, and none of those relate to each other. So you really need to keep them firewalled off and, uh, and living in their own world. See, again, that 100% just like popped up here as a new category of area plants. So that's it, and I hope that that helped.